And the Oscar goes to Parasite. Parasite. got to be shitting me, right? This has to be a joke. Can someone please raise your goddamn hand and tell me, for the love of Christ, how many fucking people in the United States of a motherfucking America saw Parasite? Hey guys, welcome back to Kiss Closure, my very confusing channel. I think I'm doing it backwards, but I will go back to making reactions and doing more fun stuff for the channel. But I also really love just talking about different things. So today I'm talking about the Oscars. Now I could spend hours going over the history of the Oscars like I did about the Grammys, but I realized no one would be interested enough to watch it. Because let's face it, it's the Oscars and it's kind of losing touch. I don't know, Steve. I'm, I'm a little conflicted, you know? I just driving here tonight and seeing the terrible homeless problem in LA. Thank you, Chris. So many stars. <laughs> I could laugh for days, but I'll resist the urge out of sheer man power. But honestly, having not watched the entire Oscar and just some clips on YouTube, maybe I'm not the best to talk about how it was presentation wise, because the moment that made me crack up the most is this one. Oh, that was my line. Well, I guess it's mine now. Oh, son! How would you know? You were always gone when I was a kid! <laughs> See? Acting. <laughs> and the cuts one, which was also kind of funny. <laughs> So I'm not talking about the Oscars. It's pointless. It can all be summed up in this one statement. So many great directors nominated this year. I don't know, Chris. I, I, I thought there was something missing uh, from the list this year. Vaginas? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so instead, I'll talk about something that was very inspiring and also controversial. Parasite taking all the awards. And the Oscar goes to... Parasite. <laughs> Ho. I'm ready, ready to drink tonight, so. <laughs> For the love of Christ, how many fucking people in the United States of a motherfucking America saw Parasite? And yes, I have watched Parasite. I've also watched Joker and realized that both talk about the same issues but in completely different ways. Both dealing with classism, extreme poverty, social issues, and raising some kind of awareness. Of course, Joker goes in a very dark route with a protagonist that will eventually become a mass killer, while Parasite takes a more comedic angle that later on settles in your heart much stronger than you expected it to. Who deserves the Oscar then, and why all the hype about Parasite? They've won almost every single award season this time. Now the strange thing about Parasite winning in almost every single category nominated is that it does seem to send the message of equality, inclusivity, and all the good things that people like talk about. In fact, let's not undermine this amazing achievement. Parasite is the first foreign-speaking film to win in the major categories. Parasite has six Academy Award nominations and is the first film not in the English language to win Best Picture. That is such an amazing achievement for the film for South Korea and also for film internationally. But this is very first Oscar to South Korea. Thank you. Uh, but is it really inclusive? Because looking at the entire list of nominations, there seems to be very few instances of true inclusivity. But once again, I think only one statement is enough to show you that they can be very racist. And this is that statement like, it's so, so sad if you think about it. Think how much the Oscars have changed in the past 92 years. Yeah, they've changed a lot, Steve. Yeah, they have. Uh, you know, in, back in 1929, there were no black acting nominees. No. And now in 2020, we got one. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing growth. So now let's just dive in. Which one deserved to win? And why was there such a focus on social commentary films like Joker and Parasite? 
Let's begin with the film that didn't win the Oscars, Joker. And honestly, I think we could all use a good laugh. So please welcome Joker. This is a complete retelling of the story that we know. To most, the Joker is a bloodthirsty psychopath. However, he's very clever and principled when it matters. This is a very different Joker, an almost heartbreaking take on a story that we've sort of ignored. He lives with his mother in a rundown apartment. He has a horrible job as a clown. And just to add salt to the wound, he's not very good at it. He's not funny. <laughs> his hopes of being on a stage as a comedian are severely destroyed by the very man he looks up to. He slowly becomes even more depressed as there seems to be a rather bad streak following him, a series of unfortunate events. And oh, this is a very interesting one. The world is going to hell. There are no jobs, no opportunities. And to top this all off, mental illness is also presented in a very clever way as we see Joker struggle with hallucinations, uncontrollable impulses, severe depression, severe anxiety, and hopelessness. I think the film handled the class divide rather well, as just like in Parasite, there were a lot of symbolisms and hidden truths. For instance, the way the top class, the 1%, doesn't seem to be concerned with the plight of the poor. In fact, while their world, Gotham, is going to hell, majority of the rich are out watching a play and enjoying themselves. Second, the symbolism of the staircase going down basically going down in life, losing your place. In this case, the Joker enjoys his downward descent. He accepted that there's nothing to do about it. Like he says, his life sort of felt like a bad joke all along. I used to think that my life was a tragedy, but now I realize it's a comedy. Then there is the wishful thinking, dreamlike hope the most poor and middle class people have that they will one day ascend the heights and be in the same class as the billionaires of our world. Joker dreams of this imagining being praised and adored and loved. Also the connection his mother invents in her mind about Joker being the son of the Wayne family that one day his rich father will save her from her situation and that he will be invited into the mansion and live a brilliant life. In fact, the tragedy is that he never got past the gate and in the end, it was all just a distant dream. However, Joker doesn't end positively. We get to see the resulting chaos of the world that is divided and he rises up to be a leader of this chaos. It's honestly very clever in a subtle way. However, what I will say is that this is not Joker. I think the film was all about presenting all these issues by picking a figure we know and presenting him in a completely different way. So yeah, not the same Joker but an interesting story about social class, mental illness and the world. Now comes the winner, Parasite. And I think the best way to watch this film is without any idea what's happening. Go into it completely fresh. Don't watch any spoilers or listen to any commentary until you watch it. Trust me, it's worth it. So spoiler alert. Parasite takes on the same concept of social class but in a completely different way. In this case, we follow a poor family, the Kims, as they interact with the rich Park family. Sounds like a simple idea but it's so brilliantly done. It starts out with a look outside the window, establishing right away that this family is poor but longs for more. As all people in these kinds of position, they are willing to work hard and feverishly hard for the hope of achieving their dreams. In this case, a friend that we never really see again, a rich friend, gives the son of this poor family an opportunity to work for the rich Park family as a tutor for the eldest child. I like the notion that this friend who gives this opportunity is never seen again in the whole film. It does also play a lot with symbolism about opportunities that come and are never seen again. And with this chance into the gates of wealth, they slowly infiltrate the rich family until every single member of their family is hired by the parks. At this point, the film takes a turn that is hailed by this hailstorm. 
While they're supposedly living life, taking advantage of their newfound superiority, they forget about their home that is currently flooding. But at that same time, they're hit with the realization that this position that they're craving, that they're fighting for, has already been taken by someone else. That there is in fact an actual person living in the bunker who has been living there for over four years. It is in many ways the position of an actual parasite, devoid of life, living the shadows of the rich. This is best symbolized by this scene that shows him turning on the lights as Mr. Park walks into the house, thinking in himself that it will be recognized, congratulated, admired by the man. While Park doesn't seem to pay any notice to it, to him it is just part of his perfect life. Just the same way that you can see in the world that the working class work for the benefit of the rich. At this turning point, the Kims are reminded very harshly of their real place, that they have no part with the rich. And this comes up with the idea of a smell, that the poor will always smell poor. And as they make this discovery, their fears and resentment finally take over in a very shocking finale. The clever thing about Parasite though is that it uses comedy to touch on this dark subject. For half the movie you would think it's a very clever funny satire, but once it gets to this part where all the killing happens, it takes you to a place, a completely different place. But if you're watching very carefully, you'll see that the director touched on this from the very beginning. The longing, sorrowful look on Mr. Kim's face, for instance, sets the tone of the story as we see his mannerisms shift throughout the movie. As it starts, he has no hope and lives in despair. In the middle of the film, he seems ignited and makes self-declarations. But then the reality of his nature, his smell that he is poor sets back and we see a hopelessness that is almost broader than before. We see resentment in his eyes. And then the film has a clever use of symbolism as well, just like in Joker. But in this movie, I have to say, it is done better. Because it didn't go all out in one genre, but had a comical tone to it. The staircases, for instance, the rise to new heights is greatly distinguished between the poor and the rich. And on the day of the downpour, we see the Kims going down flight after flight after flight of staircases, bring us back to the reality that there exists a very, very, very big gap between the rich and the poor. It's also very sad, and by the time they reach their flooded house, you can see how desperate their situation is. While the rich see this big rain as a blessing, to the poor, it takes away families, memories, belongings, and safety. Another clever use of symbolism is the window and the light. To the Kims, the light also shows the shifting place in society. Starting out rather hopeful, it then becomes dark and foreboding. Then it becomes broken and then finally in complete and total darkness. As the patriarch of the Kim family succumbs to living like an actual parasite in the basement of the rich house. Another clever thing that the film did was having no real villain. The rich are not generally bad people, just strangely out of touch with the suffering of others around them. This is shown in how easily they let go of the old staff. And later in the film, even as the Kims took on the new role, we see they didn't really matter to the parks. This part is very chilling since the patriarch calls for the car keys, not realizing that someone else's life is in true danger. And the thing that shocks me even more is the, the thing about the stench. He literally pulls up a dying man, holding his nose in disgust because he smells poor. That is so, so heartbreaking. And at the same time, the Kims aren't really villains. While we watch the film as it starts, we become more and more shocked by the lengths they would go. But looking at what awaits them, it makes sense. The tragic thing is that it ends up with the poor fighting each other for positions instead of helping each other. So the true villain then becomes the social classes. The fact that never will these two halves ever be one. The ending puts this in perspective for us, how hopeless things are for the poor. While the father, now in complete darkness, hides in the house like an actual parasite, the only hope the family has to free him from his fate is if they can buy the house. The son makes a promise to work so, so hard to one day buy the house and free his dad, saying, all you have to do is walk up. <laughs> But does he achieve it? 
it ends chillingly, emphasizing again the wishful dreams that many hold in their heads but will never achieve. Basically, the 1% is separate. No one in the bottom percent will ever achieve it. Wow. So which one did it better? Which one deserved the Oscar? Which one showed the struggle of social class? I have to say, Parasite did it better. It was a beautifully filmed movie, perfectly paced and clever with its symbolism. The use of comedy was also very clever in Parasite, which is ironic because Joker is literally supposed to be about a comedian, <laughs> but no one laughed the entire movie, which I get is part of the point of the movie. It is a clever way of representing mental illness. So yeah, Parasite is a far better film when it comes to social commentary, classism, and the great divide between the rich and the poor. But Joker may have been better when it comes to mental illness. And this is where I get a bit controversial. Hollywood suddenly making these films and promoting them like crazy, to me sort of looks like a guilty pleasure, like a patronizing move. So the Oscars to me, just like the Grammys, and just like the long staircase between both worlds, very few people ever get a chance to stand on that stage. And maybe that's why Parasite is a powerful story. That's why maybe it deserves all the Oscars. Because it's ironic in a sense. So my own personal thoughts is that Parasite is such a clever film. You have to see it if you've not. And it does touch on where we are currently as a society. We should be worried because we are in such a capitalistic world. The poor really have no chance to reach the heights of the rich, even in 10 generations. And I think that was the main message of Parasite. His father might die in that basement as, well, a parasite. I'm ready, ready to drink tonight, so... <laughs> Thanks so, so much for watching this video, honestly. Every time I post a video, I have a severe anxiety attack. So it means the world to me that you're watching, even though I'm not good at showing that. As always, tell me your thoughts on Parasite and Joker and the whole Oscar thing. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.